Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Triple P with me, Surya Sridhar. So as some of you may know, I'm a Potterhead, and that just basically means I love Harry Potter. I grew up with it. I read all the books, I watched all the movies, I had Harry Potter board games at home, and recently I went to London to check out the Harry Potter shop, and of course, platform nine and three quarters. So guys, there's only one thing left for me to do, to go to Porto. And you might ask, why Porto? What's there? Now, as some of you Potterheads might know, JK Rowling lived in Porto for two to three years teaching English. And that's where she wrote the first draft of the Philosopher's Stone. And she, of course, got a lot of inspiration from the city. And we're going to be checking out seven of those places. So are you guys ready? Because I am. Let's go. Number one, Libreria Lelo. The Libreria Lelo is undoubtedly one of the most beautiful bookstores in the world. You'll be stunned by the woodwork, the glass art, and its most important feature, the red winding staircase. Many Potterheads believe that it actually inspired the incredible Hogwarts moving staircases as well as the interior decorations of the Diagon Alley premium bookstore called Flourish and Blots. You'll be shocked to know that I stood in a queue for over 45 minutes and paid 3 euros to get into this bookstore, but trust me, it was worth it. Number 2, Escovaria de Belo Monte. In Harry Potter, do you remember the scene where he's walking through Diagon Alley, ogling at the beautiful Nimbus 2000? These magical brooms and the ones at the brushes of Belo Monte have a striking resemblance, especially since they're made by hand, are of high quality woods and natural fibers and have a rustic look to them. Also, you may have noticed the similarities in the font used on the store sign to the one used in Harry Potter branding. Cool, eh? Number 3, Universidade do Porto. Now guys, you remember the outfit at Hogwarts, don't you? In case you forgot, you can just head on over to the University of Porto to check it out. Yep, you heard me right. The students also have a similar outfit. A white button-down shirt, a tie, a sweater, dark trousers or skirts, and of course, a full-length cape. If the Hogwarts Express came chugging by, they would just need to jump on and they'd blend right in. Number 4, Cafe Majestic. Now, legend has it that J.K. Rowling frequently visited Cafe Majestic on Rua de Santa Catarina, which isn't surprising as it was a popular place for intellectuals and literary giants. It is said that she would jot down notes on the napkins when she got an inspiration for her first book, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I was so struck by the stunning Art Nouveau design of the place that I decided to treat myself to a yummy French toast and soak in the ambience. Number 5. Fonte dos Leoes there's no doubt that Gryffindor has a special place in our hearts, especially since the main characters are from this house. It is speculated that the Fountain of Lions in Porto inspired J.K. Rowling to think of this beautiful emblem that symbolizes courage and bravery. The interesting thing is that the lions aren't just normal ones, they have majestic wings, resembling the mythical griffin, hence Gryffindor. Number 6. Torre dos Clericos no doubt that one of the most emotional moments in Harry Potter was the death of Albus Dumbledore, the beloved headmaster. The scene shows him falling from the astronomy tower, the highest point in Hogwarts. It is said that this was inspired by the 76 meter high Clericos Tower, which for a long time was the highest building in all of Portugal. After climbing its 240 stone spiral staircases, I finally made it to the top to check out the breathtaking panoramic scenery. Seriously, it really did remind me of the Astronomy Tower in Hogwarts. Number 7. Antonio de Oliveira Salazar 
Now, some of you may not know this, but Antonio de Oliveira Salazar was the Prime Minister of Portugal from 1932 to 1968 and was known to be a dictator with a strong sense of censorship. It is very much possible that it inspired the antagonistic Slytherin house and its founding father, Salazar Slytherin, who was a parcel mouth and one who believed in blood purity. What do you guys think? I would be able to lead another to finish Salazar Slytherin's noble work. Well, you haven't finished it this time. Alright Potterheads, that takes us to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed this magical journey through Porto and that you'll be making your way here very soon. Do hit the like and subscribe buttons and of course the bell icon to stay notified for more of my travel videos coming up. See you guys next time.